Welcome back everybody, it's time for the video. And today we're gonna to talk about isolation transformers and how to properly use them. This is from a non-expert, but someone who's been doing a lot of reading on this. So, today we've got this stand-in for a human being, right here, this is uh, Chuckles the uh, light bulb, right here. And um, if Chuckles lights up, that means that this human got a shock, right here. So, we're just gonna imagine that this is Chuckles, and this is Chuckles' fingers, right here. So we're gonna just set Chuckles to the side here, and uh, let's talk about isolation transformers. So, I've got my outlet tester here, and since I'm putting it in upside down, these two lights should light up when it's properly wired. As you can see, it is a properly wired outlet, and next door to this outlet, right here, plugged in, is this isolation transformer right here. Okay, so here's Charlie, uh, excuse me, Chuckles. Anyway, so if Chuckles were to stick his fingers into an outlet like this, there's the hot side, and there's the ground, he's gonna get a shock right there. You see, he's getting that shock. Likewise, if Chuckles were to stick his fingers into both terminals of this isolation transformer, he's gonna get a shock as well. So, but if he's not touching anything else, he's not gonna get a shock at all. So that's, as long as he's touching only one of these terminals, he's good. He can touch ground. The only thing is here is that on my workbench, it's GFI. So I have to use common here to simulate ground because that's the same in the outlet. And I don't wanna blow my breaker right now because I'm running my 3D printer. So um, yeah, so you notice that he's not getting any shock. On a normal non-GFI outlet, the common is connected to the same bus bar in the United States as ground is. So they're the same thing. It's just that when you're on a GFI or GFCI outlet, um, if you touch that, if I, were to, if I were to touch the ground right now, it's gonna blow the breaker. I don't wanna blow the breaker. The lights will turn off and everything. So anyway, so that's what, let me put it back into common. So Chuckles is not getting a shock. Chuckles is not getting a shock either way. So then just to show here, we're gonna go to voltage and make sure you guys can see that. Okay, so if I plug into both sides here, and I switch it to AC voltage, you can see that it's out, this isolation transformer's outlet is outputting about 120 volts right there. And then if I take this, better not need that. Well, it's fine because it's kind of Now, if I plug it in here, I'm gonna get 120 volts as well, right there. And then the other thing, this is kind of weird, but um, so I'm gonna plug this into common and I'm gonna switch to, well, I'm on some AC voltage. And this is, that's which is why I use a light bulb because you'll see that I'm getting 40 volts AC here, but there's no current behind it. So if I go back and switch it here, I gotta switch it to AC again. You'll see there's zero current or zero amperage coming out of it. So um, basically, there's nothing there to, to do anything. That's why you couldn't light the light bulb. So that's why we have Chuckles light bulb being a standard for human being. Now, this would apply also to, now if you take your monitor out, and this is what you're gonna be doing, and you're connecting it to an isolation transformer, it's not grounded, you don't want it grounded. Um, because if you ground it, now all of a sudden you're referencing com common to this, this transformer. If a transformer is bonded across the common, you're having increased risk of getting a shock here. So, <clears throat> Let's say you, now you plug your monitor in here. You can touch any one point on that monitor and not get a shock. Like you could technically should be able to touch the, the, the anode cup and not get a shock. It's a lot of voltage, so your hair might stand on end, but I don't think you'll get a shock. I don't have a high voltage probe to test that, so I'm hoping that um, someone else would do that and just give it a try. Um, but you shouldn't get any shock from the, the, the anode cup at all. Now, if you touch the frame of the monitor, which is the local negative terminal, let's not call it ground, it's a local ground, it's not an earth ground or earth reference ground. If you were touching the frame of the monitor, which is the negative side of this, even if you are plugged into this and then you touch the anode cup, you're gonna get a shock. And But you can touch the frame and not touch anything else and not get a shock. You should be able to touch the anode cup, not get a shock. It is a very high voltage, it might arc across, I don't know, depending where your arm is. Um, 
but you shouldn't get a shock from that. I'm not an expert, but based on the stuff I've read, that's why you should use an isolation transformer because it reduces your risk of a shock. But it needs to be a fully floating isolation transformer like this one right here. So just don't clip that ground onto your monitor frame because now you're all of a sudden earth ground referencing that monitor, even if you're using an isolation transformer. So that's all I wanted to say, and that's it for the video, and I'm stopping here.